uh, shares of Comcast, we should say up more than 30 percent since Peacock was first announced about one year ago. But as Julie mentioned, Peacock is facing some very stiff competition. HBO Max, Apple TV Plus, Disney Plus, not to mention Netflix and Amazon. And here to discuss the changing streaming landscape is Rich Greenfield. He is the co-founder of Lightshed Partners. You were at the presentation yesterday. I was. And your takeaway was what? This is great for consumers. I mean, who wouldn't want lots of content, less ads, easy to find? And the best part, Andrew, is as you watch, it gets smarter. <laughs> so it's going to learn what you like. And if you like watching CNBC clips or you like watching Saturday Night Live clips, right. you're going to get more of what you, the consumer, like watching. Okay, so great for the consumer. Amazing. By the way, there's lots of, uh, I know a lot of companies that are uh, money losing companies that are fabulous for the consumer. Tell me whether this is good for business. Look, it's, uh, there is a substantial advertising opportunity. I mean, if you think about most of what's happening right now across the entire media landscape, you're seeing most of the places that are being created, Netflix, Amazon, Disney+, Plus, Apple TV+, Plus. there's no place for advertising. Like, literally, you know, look, you can put some sponsored product placement right. into some of these shows, of course, but there really is no place for advertising. And you're seeing what we're hearing from advertisers. You had big advertisers in the audience yesterday from Eli Lilly to Unilever, Target. They're dying to find and reach consumers. And so you're going to take the ad load down dramatically and you're going to create a real opportunity to sell so very premium question, advertising. Though. So Tom Rogers was on in the last hour. Sure. And one of the comments that he made, though, is that the rate at which NBC will have to sell those ads on Peacock is going to, at a C, on a CPM basis, will be at a substantial premium to make this work, to make the numbers work. He thinks they'll have to be at a substantial premium to what, for example, a Hulu and others in the same space are getting. Square it up for us. Does that make sense? You're shrinking the inventory, right? Like, if I, if I go on right now and I want to watch, so we did this test the other day preparing for Peacock Day. So we went and we just tried NBC's experience. So we watched an episode of This Is Us right. on the NBC iPad app. Literally, on that experience, there was eight and a half minutes of ads in 44 minutes of content. That's going to shrink now from over eight and a half to sub five. So you're going to shrink the inventory and tell the advertiser, we're going to give the consumer a much better experience. There's going to be a lot fewer advertisers and you're going to pay a premium. And my question is, are the advertisers going to pay a premium? Based on what I heard yesterday, absolutely. This is exactly what the advertiser wants. A better, less repetitive. I mean, I, in that experience, I got served the same ad five right. times. Hmm. Okay. But me, it, you, this you're is going to stop on torturing what you, me. Rich, this is based on what you heard from advertisers who were in the room yesterday, correct? correct? They want this. I mean, they want right. a better... First of all, consumers want this, right? Like, nobody wants to get the same ad five times in a row. Was it Mike Bloomberg? No, it wasn't. Because I'm getting five in a row for him out in, the, in New Jersey right now. Mike well, is spending pretty Rich, aggressively. Let, let me ask you a separate question. One of the other things they're doing is changing the programming dynamic. We talked about late night, for example, being available at 8, 8, 8 p.m. at night. The assumption there is, A, you, that there's two different sets of viewers. Yes. Right? And so the question is, are there two different sets of viewers? Will it cannibalize uh, ratings at night and the advertising base at night? And the other question is, if you're a cable operator who has paid a carriage fee on the assumption that there's this linear programming available and that the first time you're going to be able to see Seth Meyers is 1230, does it upset the apple cart to air him at 8 p.m.? Look, we started on this kind of, what I, we created this hashtag good luck bundle five or six years ago and, you know, sort of no one sort of bought into it and no one really thought cord cutting was going to be a thing. When you look at where we are now, NBC or Comcast NBC, this is where the world is going. I mean, you, you can fight the shift, right? Like, what you're talking about is, will cable operators like this? Is this I'm good? Not saying, should, I'm not saying, do you fight the shift or should you fight the shift? I'm saying, what, who, is there a fight on the other end? Look, they're going to be upset. Disney's putting content from FX onto Hulu a couple hours after it airs. In fact, there's going to be some FX content that never airs on Linux, <laughs> but only airs on Hulu, and you don't need a cable subscription to get Hulu. The entire business model is changing for entertainment television. There's no doubt about it. Consumers don't want to watch in a linear form live. Just less and less every single day, especially outside of news and sports. Um, Julia is still in L.A. and wanted to uh, get her thoughts on uh, some of the things that you've been saying. Julia? 
Yes, absolutely. Just to jump in on what Rich has been saying about demand from advertisers, I've also heard from advertisers that there's huge demand for getting another place to play in the ad-supported streaming market because based on some of the statistics I've seen, we're going to see a 30% increase in ads going onto a digital video um, over for this year compared to last year. And a lot of that is due to the fact that TV ratings are declining. Advertisers need to be able to reach the same number of people. So there's huge demand to be able to chase people where they are. And then just another little nugget about Hulu. I want to point out that yesterday, Steve Burke said that it was possible that in two years when their deal with Hulu expires, that they'll pull back some of the content that they've been sharing with Hulu and will have it exclusively, <clears throat> excuse me, on Peacock. And I think that's when there will be a real moment where we see Hulu and Peacock become much more competitive with each other when they're no longer sharing a lot of that content. And that's when uh, NBC Universal can really ramp up the competition. Rich, if you're an investor in Comcast, parent company, of course, of this network that we're on right this second. You like this. You like this. The you question do. is, do you like it more? Meaning, when Disney Plus was announced, <clears throat> you, could, you could see the chart. It was like a rocket ship, sure. right? Um, that has not happened in this case. The stock's actually been on the move in a nice way for the past you know, week and a half now. I mean, look, weeks, Disney but... is lighting earnings on fire, right? I mean, earnings before 2020 earnings for Disney three years right. ago were eight and a half dollars. They're now going to be sub five. So, so what's this stock worth? Disney has lit money on right. fire. Investors are embracing it for now. Comcast approach is a far less expensive. Some would call it, you know, not too conservative. I mean, you've heard that. Right. I've Someone heard that. has Comcast <laughs> being too conservative. <laughs> I think you've heard. Right. right. This yeah. is not too conservative. This is doing exactly what Comcast should be doing okay, so to if you're leverage investor, their assets. If you're an investor, A, would you own Comcast relative to the other cable or other companies out there? You like Netflix I, and I others? I think Comcast is very well positioned. Broadband is still the core of this story. This is giving consumers who use Comcast broadband more to do. Look, we would be even, you know, I think about this platform, I'm not sure other cable operators are right. going to embrace this, but Comcast doesn't need Charter. Okay, so Charter doesn't want to do this. What, what Comcast think, is going to roll this out nationally. What? What do you think the stock should be worth then? I think there's a lot of value creation just out of broadband alone. I think okay. all this other stuff. If I, gave you, if I gave you $10,000 and told you that you could buy any one of those companies right there, uh, look, which one faith, do you buy? Look, I think the most exciting global opportunity where there's no, you know, you talked about the, the pressure on the core legacy business as you do this. Whether it's Disney, whether it's Comcast, you're all going to have this pressure as you disrupt your legacy business. I think you want to own the pure play, which is Netflix, is the most exciting stock over the next 12 months. They report on Tuesday. If they grow global net ads, that's going to be a very good stock over the next 12 months. But look, I think Comcast has proven very resilient and actually, as you said, pointed out, has had a really nice move over the last several weeks.